Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad to jo that you're joining us again this week. We're always happy for people like you, people that follow the issues that are happening in our cities. And if you haven't seen our show before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to bring what is happening in the city and what's going to be happening in the future so that you can be more aware and follow along with issues that concern you the most. And then we do encourage you, if it's your city that we're covering, take down the email and the phone number of the people that are giving information. And if you have questions or ideas or thoughts about that issue, contact your mayors, your city council people, your city staff. They do want to hear from you. Now tonight, we're going to be looking at an issue that all of our cities do, but in slightly different ways. The issue of, of road maintenance and road construction. Now all of our cities have various different plans for dealing with this issue. So that you, in order to find out what your city's doing, you would need to check with your city council person and they can explain what your where your area at is in their process but we'll have several people talking about the processes in a couple of different cities in our city and explaining some of the details as they go along now i thought we'd talk a little bit about, because you've got something that you were doing in January. You were helping residents understand your total road yeah. maintenance program, and I thought that was kind of interesting. Why did the City Council decide to set up a public meeting on that? Well, I think what we do these kind of like yearly presentations uh -huh. where one group department will come and give right. the update. Right. And so we decided, you know, people always have questions. When's my road getting working? Right. We have right. a franchise fee now, yeah. which is not always popular. Yeah. Uh, but so people are always oh, like, when's right, my road going right. to get done? You know, this road is horrible. Wow. What, you know, sometimes it's just a little bit, sometimes a lot, sometimes right. like a redo. Right. And so, you know, I talked to staff and asked, hey, can we just do an update? And then right. there's all the road projects, whether in Whatever the city, you're one work meeting, on that year. we'll right. walk through it, and I'll give everybody one time to see, uh -huh. oh, here's when the interchange. We expect to be breaking ground next year. Yeah. Uh, we'll, by the end of this year, we'll have the design 100% complete. We'll have the funding mechanism, which we've got about, I'd say about 85% uh -huh. done. Um, and here's what it's gonna design. Highway 252 uh -huh. is coming. So right now, oh, right. the residents on Highway 252 are in the planning stages. Right. To talk about what kind of, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that part. So, so how many people uh, came to the meeting? I would say not as many people. As you wanted to start out with. I think, you know, I always take that, you know, people are never excited about right. transportation unless it's gonna hit their front door. Oh, definitely. So with franchise fees, we're not assessing properties, ah. which it used to be a bigger oh, deal. Oh, right, definitely. Now we're all pooling in, so you, know, you don't have this day where someone mm -hmm. gets a $10,000 bill. Um, but I think that what it does is it gives people the way to go see what's going right, on. Right, right. And so all the council has that date. They can go back, right. check that, and, and then they can and, see it on film. And it's the kind of thing you have to start out to get people interested to come and yep. realize Oh, that's worthwhile for me to do. I, I would say it's not always a rule, but I'd, I'd say 90% of the people, until something becomes in front of them where they wake oh, up morning right, and open right. their <laughs> curtains and go, what the heck? Oh. That's when they care about stuff. Right. And that's okay. Right. That's, that's and so, the nature of people, right? But people sometimes are curious and, um, you know, oh, what's happening on our, the street that's nearby? So mm -hmm. when's 252 getting done? That'll be a, right. a big one. When's the interchange getting yep. done? So all those little things. All progress. tied together in one yes. presentation. I mean, you think back to what you said, Devil's Triangle. Right. With oh, those four lights. Right, I mean, right. think people who've never lived here didn't uh, see that. Had no idea the hell that was oh, and why it was, was called Devil's Triangle. Right. And now it's gone, but it started somewhere 20 oh, years right. ago. It with took an a long time before it got to fruition. Yes. I mean, the interchange at 93rd and 169 yep. averaged one death a year. Yep. Ah, right. Because of the, and so now we have an overpass. I'm not saying it's perfect. Right. We're not but it one. helps. There's not. No, there's perfect is hard. <laughs> right. So I think these things, they take time, they happen, and right. people. You know. Now, what kind of feedback did you get from people on that meeting? Um, I think people just like to know. Uh huh. And I think it, people are like, oh, okay. You know, it also says if you want to know what the plan is, go to this meeting, watch the video. And right. all our websites, yeah. if they go to ours, they can go to the link. 
go right to that item. Oh, they don't have to sure. go wait for the whole oh, video. Right, right. They can go to the agenda and say, I want to see 7.2. Yeah. Click on it. It takes them right to the video, and then they can watch what it. What you're interested in. Yeah. I think that helps for people's interest because yeah. a whole meeting might be more than somebody wants to sit on. But if you can find out the area that's concerned you. Absolutely. And I think it's helpful for us as uh, elected officials to be able to, when people ask questions, we can right. actually say, here's what we talked about. No hiding anything. Right. And then you mentioned Highway 252. Yep. Why don't you explain the problems there? Because not everybody out there might mm -hmm. dr drive that road. What are the current problems in that section in Brooklyn Park? And then what's underway to yeah. solve them? Well, I think that, first of all, 252 is never meant, it's supposed to be a state highway. So right. it's, and the fact that you know we have lights on it and the massive amount of traffic that's come oh, down, it, yes. it just backs up. It backs all the way up from 94 all the way up to 610. Oh, I know. And I've so, been on that. <laughs> yes. And so part of it is is people getting on and off and right. things like that. People can't get on and off. So what's going to happen is we're going to remove a bunch of intersections. Ah. And so I believe there's going to be three main intersections. And those final plans are still okay. being done. But 85th right. Brookdale Drive. And I believe there's one in Brooklyn Center, and uh -huh. I apologize not knowing what one is. I think it's the first one, okay. North and 94. Right. Um, that'll have, you know, full access. Right. Not a cloverleaf, but diamond. Right. right. And then the other ones, like 81st, and I think it's 73rd, uh, will have like right in, right out. They won't have. Uh -huh. There'll be different access, and I, I, right. I don't want to guess because they're yeah, still but, working but that out. But making Limited. it a more smooth running. The bottom road. line is no lights. Right. And so even at the Brookdale Drive and 85th, it will be overpass. The road ah. will go over the, the local road. Right. So we won't be, have this mix of people who just want to cross to go right. to Monroe School right. from the river with tr people just trying to get home to Anoka. So we think that'll help things oh, a lot. Oh, right. Yeah, I would think it'd help the traffic and help the accident ratio. <laughs> well, and I think we've seen, we've removed all the lights in Brooklyn Park uh -huh. on 169. Um, so we know that if we can remove lights, it only helps. And so the work will begin on all of that this summer? No, no? I, th I think it's when? a couple years. Okay, a couple years down the road. It's so it's still, they still have to finish the planning and the... Yeah, and I think the, the MnDOT um, wants, they've got some work going elsewhere and they don't ah, want to have okay. two, of course I always think that they purposely <laughs> pick two <laughs> roads that are parallel with each other, but they're saying that they right. don't want to do work on 35W or 35W North yeah. at the same time that two. Oh, yeah, and they got that project going. However, right I've always believed they just do things at the same time and <laughs> screw with everyone. Why but not? I think they're trying to balance okay, it out. But right, the right. important part, I think, is thanks to the um, bonding bill uh -huh. last year and the work of the legislature by all legislators right. and the governor, Dayton, uh, the money's there. Yeah, so, so the project yeah. just Without needs, the money, none right. of this would yeah. be happening. Wouldn't so be, right. the start date is just a function of what's best. Right. But the fact is there is money set to, aside to get for it this, done. and it's going to get done. Oh, that'll so, be a big help. Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, and Hennepin County mm -hmm. um, working together with MnDOT on that. And then we'll talk a little bit about Highway 55. Now... It's at like sort of a talking stage, and maybe it has been for a long time, about what are some concerns that people have about this road and what are some changes that you might want to make. So it's kind of at the beginning stage, right? Yeah, we're, um, uh, there's been some uh, uh, proposals at the state legislature. Mm -hmm. It's a Minnesota highway. Right. And one of the big issues for me is that the, uh, the Highway 55 is so it so divides our community. Oh, it's it so, does. So difficult to get across. Right. Uh, some of the things that, uh, and again, this is very early stages. Right. Uh, some of the things that we've been looking at are uh, uh, installing a pedestrian tunnel. Okay. At ah. uh, at where Douglas Drive crosses. Oh, sure. With a particular eye toward those per Perpich Arts School students oh, uh, yeah. that are yeah. that are often crossing the highway right. at that point. Um, some of the things we have done is, uh, you may have noticed that just west of Douglas Drive, we uh, closed off that road that used to come into Douglas Drive and created a, an off-ramp and oh, an on-ramp right, right. to Highway 55. Right. So that, that's going to improve access uh -huh. there. Uh, the other thing we looked at is um, we recently had a team of uh, real estate and uh, development uh -huh. and construction experts come and meet at the city and develop a plan for downtown Golden Valley, ah. which we won't see their final report yet for another 
month or so, but one of the items proposed was kind of a skyway, uh, a elevated ring of oh. pedestrian above the intersection of Winnetka and Highway 55. Oh, interesting. And uh, that really appealed to me. That would allow people coming from any direction to right. go up there and then exit down yeah. in any direction to uh -huh. continue their travel. That would be a so, different kind of yeah, well, uh, solution for an area. There have been a few residents that for many years have advocated for a, a green, like a land bridge or a greenway uh -huh. over the right. over Highway 55. And, and I know yeah, that's been done in Seattle uh -huh. and uh, other places. Very, very expensive, but uh, also very nice. But that's for the way distant right. future. Well, uh, and because now it's 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 at a talking point and pulling ideas together, right? Yeah. yeah. And then what do you foresee as the next steps that would come after that? Well, one thing I've proposed is, I mean, we're talking about spending a fair amount of money right. to put this right. tunnel over at right. Douglas Drive. Um, you know, I, th I think what I'd like to do and what I've advocated in one of our council manager meetings is that we, and it would cost money, but right. I would like to see us do a study of the entire Highway 55 oh. corridor ah. through the city and identify uh, potential areas where we could cross. Uh, like I have in my mind a tunnel at, uh, say, Wisconsin okay. Avenue that would right. come under 55 and then come up on a frontage road on the, on the golf course uh -huh. side. I also think we have an opportunity where the railroad tracks go under Highway 55 at the Perpich, oh, right. near the right. Perpich Arts right. School, because we did a similar thing under Highway 100. Uh -huh. There's a roadway and a bicycle trail right. that goes under where the railroad tracks go. So um, I just think it's important to see what we might be able to do and kind of prioritize uh, so we can get the best mm -hmm bang for our buck, so to speak. So is the uh, council looking to establish some kind of group to do this studying and pulling information? Or we're, if somebody well, out there is interested in thinking, I'm really concerned about 55, is there anywhere they can plug into this process? Well, the this, this study that I'm talking about yeah. would be uh, um, similar to what we did when we did the mixed use corridor okay. along 394. We actually hired a consultant okay. Right. UHS, I believe it was at that time, and uh, they provide kind of a proposed oh, sure. solution, and then uh, we we have hearings with right. residents right. to to vet those things. We, you know, in a in a city like Golden Valley, you you always look for and welcome, you know, input from oh, residents. Oh, definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, it's important that residents right. buy into any solution that's proposed. So people that are concerned about that just keep an eye on what's happening in the city yeah, council Yeah, keep an eye on, on the website, right. uh, absolutely. Because we're always encouraging people, get involved in your city. Right. Um. Now another area I thought we'd focus on, because it's true of all cities, is that there's construction and kind of development or redevelopment happening in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And what's, we'll start with one of the projects that's getting a little play on the media. Can you tell me about the current status on the reconstruction of a bridge over 494 on Rockford Road? Yes, yes I can. So <clears throat> the Rockford Road or County Road 9, it's uh -huh. a county road. Right. Goes over when it gets to there. When it goes over 494, right. that's right. Uh, that bridge is too narrow mm -hmm. and uh, I believe the number was 88,000 cars I per know. day go over that mm -hmm. road and while they were adding that lane on 394 we experienced a lot of congestion oh, on that. Right. With the high density building that's going on out to the mm -hmm. west we're just really finding a lot of problems on that so last year the mayor Slavic and I and a few others went down and we got some funding from the state, $10 mm -hmm. million. It's a $22 million bridge, oh, wow. and it's meant to widen the road yeah. to increase flow. So people in the right lane, they'll go off onto the highway. There'll be two full lanes going across, mm -hmm. and then for the first time, there'll be two full lanes turning left, ah. allowing allowing basically the right. most of people to get through that and trying to avoid that bottleneck. Right. So it's yeah, been I a big effort on our part to get that done. Well, and, and you were lucky to get the state to agree, right? Yeah, well, it was a bit of a, a trouble there, but uh, we got some state funds allocated, 
MnDOT initially was going to give us some funds and then kind of pull them back. And you know, there's a little bit of politics oh, right, going right, on there. Right. But I do believe we'll get that funding. Mm -hmm. But the city of Plymouth also will end up donating some uh -huh. funds to that. Mm -hmm. And so the construction will take place how over what time period? It'll be a normal construction period okay. over the summer. It'll be three months where you will not be able to use uh -huh. that bridge. The whole bridge will come down uh, for about three months. And so we'll kind of have to find our way, right. ways around right. there. Uh, but that, that way is the most efficient way oh, right. to take the old right. one down and, and put the new one up. But it'll be about three to four months. So people will be kind of scrambling for a little they while. They will be. I suspect <laughs> they'll be going up to Schmidt Lake Road yeah, and crossing yeah. over and uh, or maybe down to County Road 6 uh -huh. or 55. They'll have to kind of figure out a different right. way for a little while, yes. Mm -hmm. And then be happy in the result. And then they'll be happy right. in the result, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they been, did a whole lot of work out there last summer, too, on the highway on 494. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. So it just be a continuation. <laughs> it's just a more continuation. Right. As, like I said, we get more dense in Plymouth. That's right. The biggest thing that's happened in Plymouth is over the last five or ten years is we've really added a lot oh, more people. Yes, you have. We have as many people coming into the city during the day as we have leaving at night. Wow. And huh. we, that's a lot of people. That is. That's Moving a lot of around. people. Right. We have a lot of businesses in Plymouth. And then County Road 7 is some changes are occurring out in that area. And then can you locate where County Road 47 is for our viewers out there? As I said at the beginning of my discussion, on Northwest Boulevard in Pineview goes under 494. That's okay. County Road 47. Okay. And it's a county road, and right. it goes all the way out past 101. Right. And that's a narrow road. It's a two-lane road. And a lot of people wonder about why, why do we build all these developments and we don't do the road first? Ah. That was my question. Right, right. Well, that's because it's easy to build a development. Uh -huh. A farmer sells his, his farmstead. A developer buys it, they they develop a plan, right. they bring it to the city, they get approval. The road's there, so, wow. you know, the road's there. So they go ahead and develop it. We've developed right. all these developments now and added thousands of homes, and that's a lot of traffic on the two-lane oh, road. Definitely. Currently, Hennepin County doesn't have it slated to do any work on that for Ooh. about 10 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's going to, yeah. a lot of people aren't too happy about that. So we're trying to work with the county okay. to develop a way, maybe even the city of Plymouth could build it uh -huh. if they'd give us the money to do it. Oh, sure. And I think that should be a four or five lane road. Oh, right. And with a trail next to it, it's, it, it's just necessary. Because out beyond 101, that's the next area to be oh, developed. Yeah. And so that'll be a pretty important road coming yeah. in and out if you're not on Rockford or Bass Lake right. Road. It's really in between the middle of the well, two. Well, and then being where it's located, it'll help take some of the load off of the other two. Absolutely. If you had, if you had more lanes. Absolutely. As everyone finds a new way around, right. you find a way, the quickest way to get there. And it's good to have a lot of different roads so that traffic can make adjustments, right, right, you know, right. when the Google says that's blocked, yeah. it's nice to be able to say, well, I know a, another right, way of getting right. there. But for those homeowners especially, uh -huh. and for the people who ride their bike and, and walk along, it, it, it is dangerous. It's a two lane road. Uh, it would really be great if we could get that developed over the next couple of years. So it's kind of at like a beginning stage where you're reaching out to get the resources? Yes, we're okay. reaching out to Hennepin County, state if we can. Uh, but it really is a priority. We started the conversation about what are our priorities. Right. right. Those two were big uh -huh. on our priority list. Two of the top three. And then, <laughs> and then P and E Lane and Schmidt Lake Road by the Wyzetta High School is undergoing a traffic study. Tell it us is. about the problems and about the study. So last year we had a couple of students get hit by a car uh -huh. as they were leaving school, right. crossing across the street. And uh, obviously there's a lot of concern. Anytime oh, somebody right. gets hit, right. we need a, to study it. It's a very busy intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Peeney Lane coming down, which is only one lane each, and then Schmidt Lake Road is two. Mm -hmm. And then of course the high school is right there yeah. where the two intersect. Right. So uh, traffic study is being done to determine whether or not we need to add a, additional light uh. or something to try to mitigate that congestion and that occurrence. Right. Nobody wants to see somebody hit by no. a car. And that's kind of where that started from. Okay, and who does the study? Who's involved in that? We bring out a consultant who does okay. these studies. We pay for the studies, uh -huh. so it's objective. It's not done right. by the city itself. And then they come back with the results. They might make a few suggestions uh -huh. about possible ways that sure. you could 
but sometimes a study comes back and there's really not a lot you can do right. about it. So we don't know. We have to wait till we see that. But then you have some uh, data and evidence that you can use to make your decision. Yes, and this is all done by people and by engineers who have studied right. these type of things. That's their job. It's a everything's sub specialized, right. if you oh, will. Oh, nowadays it, comes, it certainly it really is, is right. There's a lot of sub specialties. Now let's switch and talk a little bit about road construction in 2018. Um, each, you talked a little bit about that you have a plan for it. Yeah. How does the city determine which roads are going to work on and what ones will be coming up this summer? Well, we have a 10-year pavement improvement plan and every year every roadway is traveled, graded, and check to make uh -huh. sure that it's on the plan what it needs to be. Right. It makes most sense for us to do blocks of areas at a time. Right. Um, just for transportation costs, moving materials, things mm -hmm. like that, that is economically the best way to do sure. it. We have um, a lot of stuff coming up this year. Oh, you do, and, right. uh, and that's gonna be um, great when it's all done. Uh -huh. um, but it can be frustrating. And as the a motorist, going, yep, right? yep, absolutely. If you live in that neighborhood, right? absolutely. But some of these are going to be our main roads. Oh, right. Uh, Boone between Forty uh, Second and Medicine Lake Road okay. is going to be undergo what's called a mill and overlay. Okay. And a mill and overlay means they grind off the top two inches of uh -huh. the pavement. They make spot repairs as needed in the roadway. Right. They do some very small uh, work where curbs and gutters uh -huh. need to be replaced. And um, then they come back and they put two, the, the two inches back right. over it. Um, it's a great way of extending the life of a road. Uh -huh. It looks really nice when it's done. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Um, that is likely to occur late May through early June. Um, I strike that until the end of June. Okay. So we'll figure about four weeks for sure. that. Um, so that's really kind of that's kind of the number one thing that we're doing the cities of crystal and new hope are partnering to do the section of 36 avenue right. from winnetka down to louisiana both cities have um, land on each side right. of that street right so crystal and new hope uh, are working together to uh, get this completely redone right. if you drive that roadway now uh, it's in tough shape. Yeah, it needs some work. I yeah. can verify that. <laughs> yeah. Um, their city will also be crack filling about 18 miles of roadway mm. in the city this coming year. Uh, and that's usually a late uh, summer, uh -huh. early fall project. As well as there will be about uh, seven miles of seal coating and uh, seal coat and fog sealing on about seven miles of roadway. And then there were going to be some changes that you were going to make on Boone in regards oh, yeah. to what was there. Yeah, there's going to be three bump outs. Uh -huh. And a bump out is like what you see outside of Sonneson Elementary, uh -huh. where it actually uh, bumps out to the roadway. Right. And in front of Sonneson right now, we have uh, just the plastic pilings that, uh -huh. that ensure people move over. Right. It makes traffic slow down. It's a, called a uh, speed calming mm -hmm. technique. Slows down, and that's where kids cross oh, right, going to go to right. school. Um, so that's really, really helpful. The bump outs now, instead of being the pilings, are going to be cement. Uh -huh. They're going to be cement curbing. So it's going to be more definite, more obvious. Oh, sure. Um, a little bit more difficult to plow in yeah. the winter, yeah, I suppose. Um, but our folks will, will know that it's there and they'll, they'll be ready and prepared to do it. Um, these three bump outs are going to be in front of the Robinsdale Spanish Immersion, okay. the old Sunny Hollow right. for those right. of us of that right. age, um, Sonneson Elementary, and Northwood Park. There will also be no parking on the east side of the road. Ah. They are going to be putting in a bike lane there and parking will be on the west side. And uh, so it's gonna be continuing with our complete streets uh, programming that we have for our roadways to make our roadways usable by all residents. Right. Car, pedestrian, bicycle, so. And the, some roads are get municipal state aid. 
and maybe you can talk a little bit about that. You bet. Municipal state aid roads are roads that are usually the busier roads in our city. Uh -huh. And they are roads that we are able to draw money from the state on right. for maintenance and repair. And what happens is you request this money before you do the work, uh -huh. so you know exactly for budgeting purposes right. what you're going to be able to do, what you're not, how much you're able to get. Um, and the majority of the Boone project is going to be paid out of that funding. Uh -huh. And 36th Avenue, is that that kind of road or not? 36 okay. is also both a, are. a portion of that, yes. Be, be and wonderful. all of the cities around the metro area have that kind of Absolutely, they do. difference between the roads. Correct. Some are county, some are state, some are city, right? Exactly, exactly. Now, um, I thought we'll put on the screen that people can find updates on what's happening. Mm -hmm. In regards to their roadway, where should they look? They should look at the site, uh, the uh, address is 2018 okay. infrastructure improvements dot wordpress dot com is the is the website. Yeah, I'll get that and we'll put that on the perfect. Perfect. On the screen. Absolutely. It's HTTPS. 2018 infrastructure improvements dot wordpress dot com because a lot of times that will help a lot if you're wondering what's going on and have a place that you can look at it can so work to solve some problems gone are the days where the government just does what the government wants to do That's true. and <laughs> and the residents will just have to figure it out uh -huh. um, and it's thanks to shows like yours mm -hmm. um, that allow us the opportunity to connect with residents to say, hey, not only, not this is happening, but this is going to happen. Right. This is the impact. These are the trees that may come down as a oh, result right, of this. Right. This is the traffic delays. These are the workarounds. Mm -hmm. These are the projected start dates. Um, and as we go on through our projects, they're continually updated so people can get real-time information about the projects. Right, right. Very important. People, people will tolerate a lot more of what you tell them than what you don't tell them. That's true. Very and it's, true. And it's a respect thing. And it's yeah. accountability. It's providing professional service. Be sure to tune in each week to keep up to date on what's happening in all nine cities that are in CCX's viewing area, or to find out what the city next to you is doing about an air issue that you think is important. It is good government to let your mayors and city council people know what your opinion is on the issues that they're dealing with, and for them to reach out to you for their feedback. Oh, thank you for being with us again this night, and thank you to all of the people from the various cities that gave information on what's happening in their city. Well, we hope that if you've got any questions about this area, contact your city and find out who's the right person that can help you find an answer. And we hope that you'll join us again next week. Bye.